Welcome back, everybody. My name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and we are through the hump of this playlist. I would say all of the hard stuff has already been covered, and now for the rest of this playlist, we're going to cover basically like accessory things that are really good to know, but they're not core to using Git. So I would say with the knowledge that we've already covered, you can perform most Git actions. However, the rest of this playlist is going to be extra actions that are going to take your skills from good to great, and then we'll wrap up the playlist with actually how to do all of this in a professional environment. In this video, we're gonna cover just a couple small features that are not important enough to get their own video, but are important enough to still talk about. The first thing we're gonna do is cherry picking. Cherry picking is basically taking a commit from another branch and putting it onto your branch. So it's not rebasing the entire branch, but it's taking one commit and putting it onto your branch. We're also gonna talk about how to drop commits so if you're using a GUI like Git Kraken, you actually have the ability to drop commits, literally reversing things that you've committed in your history. And we'll also talk a little bit about editing commits. If you ever wrote the wrong message, you could change those messages. Again, that's gonna bring us into the realm of features that a third-party tool like Git Kraken has that Xcode just does not support today. So without further ado, let's jump into Xcode and do some cherry picking. Welcome back, everybody. So we are in this uh, Git and Source Control boot camp here, and we've done, honestly, a lot of the bulk of what we need to learn here. Uh, the last bunch of videos were pretty big features that we learned. We learned about committing, staging, stashing, pushing, pulling, branching, merging, rebasing. A lot of really big stuff. A lot of, I say, I would say keywords that if you didn't know Git before this playlist, I hope this solved a lot of it for you. Before we get into the things, I do want to just open up our project here. And we had a little bit of documentation of about some of these keywords. Let's review it one more time. So cloning is copying the repo locally. Committing is basically a checkpoint. We're going to save our current branch with the ch with changes. So let's save changes on our current branch. Stage is preparing those changes for commit. Stashing would be saving the changes for later, so not committing them. Pushing, sending local commits to the remote repo. Pulling, fetching remote commits to the local repo. And then there's a couple other things that we learned as well. We learned about merge. Merging is basically joining two different branches. So two branches as is, we're going to merge them together. Or rebase. Rebase is moving one branch on top of another branch. So we can merge the two branches together, or we can rebase one branch on top of the other branch and then merge them. So merging and rebasing, and then we're gonna learn a couple more things in this video. This video is gonna be a little sporadic because there's basically small features that I wanna talk about, but they are not important enough to deserve their own video. First one we're gonna do is has a funny name. It's called cherry picking. The cherry picking is, let's call it duplicating or copying duplicating, copying one commit from one branch to another. Copying. So let's do a quick cherry pick. All right. So firstly, where are we? We're on the main branch here. What I'm going to do is let's commit these changes that we just made here. Let's call this clean update documentation. And let's commit that. Let's branch off of our main branch. Let's do some random branch. Let's literally, just, I'm just going to call it some random branch for now. Obviously, in your own project, please keep good branch names, good commit names, and don't be as lazy as I am in this course. There's just so much I want to cover, and it takes too much brain power to think about the commit names. So some random branch is where we're on. And while we're doing work on this branch, we're going to do some something here. So maybe we change our text back again to Swiftful. And maybe that's what we really want. It's really cool. Let's commit that and let's say feature, add finalized title for screen. Stage it, let's commit it. And while we're here, maybe we're working and we're working and all of a sudden, okay, let's also change something else. Maybe we're gonna add a second button in here. So second button, click me. Let's commit that as well. And let's come in here and we'll feature, add second button to content view. Let's stage it, let's commit it, let's push it. We have not pushed it, let's push it up to GitHub. So we have two versions. 
So I have my main branch and I have some random branch that has these commits on it, these two commits. Let's switch back to our main branch. Again, in Xcode, we can just switch here. We can switch to our main branch. We can do it up here as well. So we have our main branch, our random branch. Let's switch to the main branch. From our main branch, let's start fixing, building some other feature. So this is going to be our branch called some other feature. Okay. And while I'm editing on this branch, maybe this branch edits the home view. Let's change this to hello world. And let's write a commit here. Feature, fix title again. Commit it. And let's also just push it up to GitHub. All right, so I can see that the main branch is down here. We have these commits on this branch and then this commit on this branch. Okay. So imagine a situation where you're in your project and you're building on this branch and maybe you or somebody else was building on this branch, this other branch, some random branch here. And maybe while I'm building this, I DM my colleague and say, Hey, did you fix that bug yet? And they say, yeah, it's fixed in this commit down here. I want to basically get this commit into my current branch. So there's a couple ways I can go about this. One is that I could actually just merge their branch into my branch. What if I only want to take this commit and not this one? What if I don't want this one? If I merge it, I'm taking both commits. So you can imagine if they're building a new feature and for some reason they just fix the bug in that feature, I don't want that whole new feature. I just want that one little fix, that one little patch and add it to mine. So I really just want this commit. So I could try to rebase it. I could try to do an interactive rebase. So let's come into some random branch and let's try to interactive rebase. And we could only pick one of the two, but then after the rebase, my entire branch is going to be up where it rebased. I don't actually want to move this branch at all. I want to keep this branch unchanged and just also take this commit and add it to my branch. So you'll do this a lot when somebody else has done something in some other branch and then you just want to pop in and take one little piece of change that they did, probably because their whole branch is not ready to get merged, but maybe this commit is. So this is where cherry picking comes in. So we can right click it and I can cherry pick this commit. In Xcode, I can also go and find that commit. So let's go into the repos here. And so here I'm on some other feature. Again, some other feature. And let's go to some random branch. Let's find the commit that we want. Add finalized title. I can double click it and see what it does. Okay, I just want to change it to this. Cool. Let's cherry pick that. Let's right click it. And let's cherry pick this commit. You're going to see here this little number, DDC20209. Probably wondering what that is. In these commits here, every single commit actually has a hash value. So there's a commit that has a little hash value here. If I copy it and if I paste it somewhere, which is paste here for now, I can see it's a very long number. It's a, it's a long hash value where originally I'm seeing only the first couple digits. So here the, the commit is for EA, but if I copy it, it's actually a really long number. And so every commit has its own hash. So if I was trying to tell my friend to go look at this commit, right? Uh, it's easy to tell them, Hey, check out this branch. But if I want them to look at this specific commit, I could either copy the commit message, which is going to be this text here. Now this text is relevant, but you can imagine multiple commits having the same text that's possible. Or I can copy the identifier and the identifier is that hash value. So that ID is going to be much more unique. If I paste, if I write some code here, I can see what the hash value is. So that's the commit. So now if my friend sends me this, I can go in here, I can control F and I can find that commit by the hash. So that's what that is. You don't really need to do much with it, but just letting you guys know that it's there. Back to what we were doing though. Let's come back in here and let's go into some other random branch, right click on the commit that we want just as one commit and cherry pick it. We're going to take that commit, copy it, and also add it on top of our current branch. So let's cherry pick this commit. If I look at, we can see that it's cherry picked from here, which is nice that this merge also has the original commit as well. And I can see it here. It was just added one new commit to our current branch. So this commit is the exact same as this commit. It's cherry picked from the original commit up here. So now it's twice in my history. This person has one version of it and this person has another version of it, but it is cherry picked and it is linked. So when this person goes to merge later, 
there shouldn't be a merge conflict because source control should recognize that it's the exact same change. So this is how we can just take one commit from another branch and then merge it and then add it onto ours. So we've cherry picked it and now let's push this up. So now this branch has that one feature. So that's what cherry picking is. It's sort of like rebasing, but it's just taking one commit and adding it. It's really useful if you're working with multiple branches and then you want to take a change from one branch to another without having to actually merge or rebase the entire branch. A couple other things that we're going to talk about real quick before we wrap up here. Firstly, if you're using a GUI, you can drop commits really easily. So you can't do this in Xcode, but let's just say I'm on some other feature and let's make a commit. Let's change this to house.fill. Let's commit it real quick. Feature. Again, update icon, stage and commit, push it up. And from Git Kraken, I can actually right click and drop the commit. So I can literally say like, I committed this. I, don't, I actually mistakenly committed it. I don't want it. I'm going to drop it, drop it back down so that my branch is actually here. I don't think you can do this in Xcode as it stands today. Otherwise, if somebody knows how to do it in Xcode, please let me know, comment below. I now dropped this. So now this is where my branch is. But notice that I dropped it locally, but not remotely. So my local version is actually one commit behind my remote version here. If I don't do anything, the remote repo is going to keep this commit. But now that I dropped it, I can actually, again, push this version, my local version, and it's going to rewrite that Git history. Just like when you rebased, it's rewriting, changing the actual commits. So I have to force push it. Again, this is probably why Apple doesn't have it built into Xcode because force pushing, if you do it wrong, you could really mess something up. But if you're doing it with a GUI like this, it's kind of hard to mess up, I would say. From our GUI, we can also right-click and edit commit messages. So pretend like I mistyped this commit message. I can come in here and I can actually edit the message and I can change it to, what was I supposed to say? Update title instead of fixed title and update the message. So this is super helpful, but I do want to also point out when you edit the commit message, you're actually editing the commit. So just like rebasing or where we just drop the commit, we now have this new version of our Git history that is separate from the original, right? So the original fixed titles here and update titles here. So if I edit the commit history, I now also, again, need to rebase it, need to force push the new version up. So it's going to, again, delete these two commits in replace of these two new ones here. So generally speaking, I would not edit commit messages because it seems like it's adding risk for really no reward because who really cares if you misspelled something in the commit? Just be a little careful, be a little extra careful next time. Before we wrap up this video, let's also just merge this back into main. So I'm going to right click merge this feature into main. Let's push main back up to GitHub. Let's delete these other branches real quick. And the last thing I'll talk about before we wrap up this video is just, you can check out any of these old commits. So you can obviously check out old branches, but you can also check out commits. So if I want to revert, even though I'm on the main branch, I can revert down to this. I can check out this commit down here and go back up to main, check back out main. In Xcode, I can literally go into the Git history, find this one, and then check out switch to this commit. And you're going to notice that when I do this switch, it just has this commit number up here, right? And in Git Kraken, it's actually called the head. Head is kind of a weird tag, but it's basically when you are on a commit, but that commit is actually not a branch. So normally we've created branches, but right now we don't actually have a real branch for this. We just have a head is what it's called. So a head of, a, of a what could be a branch. So we're down here on our code. Another way to do this, probably more common, would be uh, if I, let's switch back to main. And then when we go to this branch down here, instead of switching to this, let's create a new branch from it. So we'll create a branch here. In, let's just call this like old main pre-analytics or something and create a branch here. So now when I check out this branch, I'm down here, but I'm actually on a branch. So I can now make changes to this branch as well if I want to. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to switch back to main. 
I'm going to delete this branch down here because we don't actually need it or not going to use it. Just want to show you guys that some of the power that you get when you get, when you start using these GUIs is I can move really quickly in here. Once you get the hang of using Git Kraken, it is so much easier and faster than using the source control in Xcode. It really does blow my mind. Like for example, I can see here, there are no other branches here. And yet in Xcode, if I go and I refresh file status, I still see all these branches. What are these old branches? There's not even anything loading here. If I restart Xcode, open it back up, hopefully it should refresh the source control and fix itself. So those branches are now gone. Again, Git Kraken is awesome and it's super powerful. But this video was all about just a couple remaining features. We can cherry pick commits. We can edit commit titles. We can drop commits if we need to. There is other features in here, but I don't use them that much. And you can just play around with them on your own. I would say if you're using Git Kraken, create a fake project and then just click around and see what some of these buttons do. There's so much you can do. And once you master this, it will actually... 10x your productivity as an engineer. I promise you, this is hard at the beginning, but it gets really easy once you get the hang of it. And then you can literally move so much faster than you're moving today. All right, that's it for this video, but we still have a couple of really important videos coming up. Thank you all for watching. As always, my name is Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.